All right, everyone, we're back, and it's Sunday, April the 7th, Sunday afternoon. Had a quick little project going on, so I'm to let you see kind of how it's going. Um, up here, up at the farm, I keep some hives, and it has a tendency to have uh, some of the baby cows get over and rub up against them and knock them off their stands. You know, I do keep them strapped together for a ratchet strap. So if they do get twisted or knocked over, the hive stays together, but I'm not up here every day. So I'd rather not have it laying on the ground for days or until somebody else up here notices it and calls me and I have to come up and fix it. So I decided to build some heavier duty stands, not just sitting the hives on a couple of cinder blocks by themselves, but to give them something a little bulkier for more weight and to make it a little harder for the cows to, to really get in and wrap up on the corners. So what I've done is I've made a few of these up today. That's what the finished hive looks like. Um, you can see in the ground, that's where I had some really old, thin, corrugated metal and just some cinder blocks sitting on them. What I've done is I've, I've taken a, some tools, I've flattened the ground out, leveled it. I've got some big sheets of a thick galvanized steel I've been saving from work to throw down the ground, keep the grass from growing up through them. And I've basically just used um, treated 4x4s and cinder blocks to make some heavier duty stands. Now here's what one looks like if I bees all over it. So the way I wanted to do this was I didn't want to give a whole lot of extra room. I wanted to pretty well keep the weight of the hive centered between the blocks. I mean, a fully full hive can you know, be 300 pounds plus. So what I did was I went out and I didn't buy 4x4 um, four by, four by 8 foot long. I bought 4x4s four that are only 6 feet long so I didn't have to do any cuts. And um, basically double stacked the center blocks. Oh, here comes the tractor. Alright, I don't know how much background noise it's going to be. Um, I put the 4x4x6s four by four by through the center blocks. They're treated. I centered the, cent the center block there so I know what the center of each of these openings is. I just had them stick through the end. It's another reason I didn't use 8 foot long because if I didn't cut them they'd be sticking out and it would give the cow something to rub against and the goat something to stand on and jump around with. So I need to to make a few surfaces for the goats and the cows to, to mess with up here. So I just got everything leveled. You know, I do do foundationless uh, frames, so I have to keep the hives fairly level. That way everything's drawn out straight. So I had to cut into the dirt, do a little flattening work, brought a real big, you know, uh, six foot long level up here with me, put across everything, made sure it's straight. Um, tonight when it gets dark, I'll move a couple hives onto this stand from the house. Um, there's that little a little bitty hive for the beardless bee I put out the other day. And you can see, I didn't completely center the hives in the openings. You can see I offset them to the outside blocks to leave a bigger gap in the center. That way when I do open up a hive, I can flip the lid upside down, sit it right in that center block and use it to stack other boxes and frames on. And uh, you know, there's no reason to have the entrances right next to each other so that gives them a little bit more room too to have a little bit more definition so when the foragers are coming home or a queen maybe later down the road it's a little bit less likely if they're accidentally going to land on the wrong porch you know if they're only two or three inches apart as over a foot apart makes it a little bit easier it's another reason why i didn't make these longer and try to put three on it instead of bees having to recognize left from center right from center and then you know straight center this is just a you go to the left or go to the right it's easier for them to determine which hive is theirs, especially if I get a lot of cedar boxes on them that aren't colored and everything starts looking the same. It's a little bit easier for them to tell uh, you know, where home is. The straps, I didn't go through the cinder blocks this time. I didn't want that much strap exposed. If it was going to the outside of the blocks, it'd be an angle up in the air. It'd be easier for something to hit it and break the boxes loose. So I went around the boxes themselves. But I crossed the straps over the 4x4s, so you can see on this side, it goes to the inside of the 4x's. And on this side, it goes to the outside. So the strap does wrap around them underneath. So I, I tightened them up and I really pushed and kicked around on them and they're not moving anywhere. They're kind of nice and tied together as a unit. And that'll help for the, you know, like I say, the animals and then the high winds up here on top of a hill and get a lot of storms. But that's what I'm going through and doing to all my hives. I'm building stands. I'm using you know, some big sheets of galvanized steel. Sometimes I'm using some smaller pieces. 
I'm coming up here and cutting out flat spots and putting them in. So, you know, that's just another way you can build a heavier duty hive stand. It's not the most economical stand. I mean, if I used you know, four center blocks for each hive, that's a lot cheaper. But in terms of heavy duty and of weight bearing, you know, a four by four by six, if you, if you actually go and don't buy a wholesale and you go to a, a home improvement store, they may be close to $9 each. Considering I already have a lot of cinder blocks, you know, at max I have, what, $20 in a stand that'll hold two hives, be heavy duty, last a long time, and can really bear a lot of weight. So for me, you know, leaving something up here like this for years and years, that's, it's worth the cost. It's, it's not that big a deal. Then especially if I go ahead and go buy some four by wholesale, it'll be a little bit less expensive. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get up here, move some more hives, place some more of these. So uh, just want to show you, it's another way to do stands. That's how I'm doing them up here. Um, uh, just you know, remember, if you need to get these as level as you can get them, especially if you're doing foundationless, that makes a huge difference. And you can also, you can notice where the old hives were. Since I didn't move them to a new location, I had to put the stand right behind them. The hive on the right is directly behind the one that was there before. The one on the left behind and a few feet over. But that's close enough to the original position that the foragers coming back can pretty easily find their home. You wouldn't want to move the bees from right here and say put them all the way over there because that would cause a lot of confusion. If you're going to do something like that, you know, that's an after dark kind of move and you need to bottle them up for a few days to make them come out and remap the area or, you know, haul them off to somewhere else for a day or two and bring them back. Or even, you know, drop some bricks and things in front of their entrance to where they can't directly come straight out and to really give them a different kind of obstruction to have to map around to force them to go out and, and remap their area because their pathway, you know, their normal working map is thrown off so badly by what you put in front of them. You know, there's different ways to do it and everybody has their preferred way. Just make sure if you're really going to to move them around to you know, pay attention to, to what you're doing. Right. I'll see you guys next time.